Greetings, Nick with Sweetwater here, and today I'm really, really happy to announce we're joined by Lizzie and Joe from the amazing Hailstorm, and they're going to open up with a special treat for us because I sent them some snacks and some water via FedEx, so their repayment is they're going to do an acoustic version of The Silence, so without further ado, enough of my babble, over to this fine duo. Take it away, my friends. Driving to DC, I was drunk in your back seat. I know that nothing will ever be like when we were 17. The stars will rearrange, the sun will fade away, everything will change, but we will still remain. And outlast the pyramids I will feel you I will see you I will feel you after the sun Billy nights driving down I 95, singing in a smoky room when we had everything to lose. I do. And when we had some room to breathe, you said that you would marry me. But even if we never do, I will. You I know that nothing will ever be like when we were 23. Man's war will rage and blue will turn to gray. Everyone will change, but we will still remain and our last appearance.
<laughs> wow. I should really stand up and applaud, but I'm scared these <laughs> earphones will fall out. Because <laughs> I don't have It's a very have delicate any, balance. Yeah, because I don't have your brother's tape to stick it to my ear. That's true, <laughs> yes. No, no, nobody needs that tape. No, <laughs> nobody touches that tape. No, <laughs> not now. RJ's ear tape. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's another thing. You, you, sure. you should put it on the Hellstorm website. <laughs> ear tape. RJ, so have RJ sign it. It'll be, you know... I'll I mean, buy. everyone's got a everyone's got a side hustle these days, right? Yeah. yeah, you have to right now. COVID times. When people are watching this, going, "What the hell are they talking about?" So, could you quickly explain? Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, RJ's RJ. If you've never seen or met my younger brother, who is our drummer, he is like, he's like if Animal from the Muppets and David Lee Roth just <laughs> had a baby. <laughs> He's just, he's just, he's a crazy person. He always has been. And he's always been like just camera ready. I, I, I had a, a conversation with him the other day where I was like, you know, I, myself in like, as your older sister, I've just been striving to be more like you for like years and years because I like, he just, I have to work very hard to be like, okay with everything and, and take those risks. And, and he's just always just doing it. And, and the thing you're referencing. And what I'm referencing, yeah, was. Was what, the in-ear monitors? So he, he got these, we all get fitted for in-ear monitors. And so that they mold to your ears and they give you molds. And for some reason he figured out a way to screw that up. And the mold, <laughs> and the, and the, imagine that. And the molds weren't, weren't like tight in his ears. So he's trying everything. So at this one point in time, this gig, he comes out like, okay, we got ten minutes till show, and he's got like swimmers wax in there, like just to seal it up. And then he just has this like gaff tape, just taped <laughs> all around his ears so that they don't fall out. And I'm like, you know, if it was anybody else, I'd be like, what is going on? But I'm like, you know what? I'm not even gonna ask. Just, just it's, it's a, just you. It's, it's a beautiful. Beu yeah, it's just a beautiful. That's why I love drummers. They're insane and amazing. Yeah, and and, and how, how how did he play that night? Probably flawless, right? Uh, he played, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, he played great last he that night. Plays yeah, great. He, I don't it's always a different thing. Every single he gets, if if he gets bored, um, you know, because all of a sudden there'll be like a, a triplet fill where there shouldn't be a triplet fill, or it's like I'm just gonna throw this in here. Cowbell, absolutely. Let's just throw in a cowbell. <laughs> um, but yeah, he 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 wears his emotions and his feelings on his sleeve. He is probably the ultimate person that is just living in the now always not not even the, in like the microsecond in yeah. the micros yeah he just <laughs> is is that way and and every now and then like when we don't hear from him for a couple of days i'm like i wonder where where rj is and what he's doing right now because whatever it anything. is it's 110 percent right there in the moment so yeah exactly well first and foremost thanks for taking the time to do this and it's really good to see you guys because it's been a while thanks to this weird and wonderful world in which we currently live how are you guys coping with this with regards staying productive and upbeat and positive, because one of the things at the risk of being obsequious, um, one of the things I always loved about you guys is your, you always the glass is always half full, it's never half empty. And right now we need more people with that attitude. So how are you keeping your glass half full? Uh, you know, f first and foremost, something that we've been talking about a lot lately um, is understanding that there are things that that we can't control you know we can't predict the future and and we can't go back in time and make things right so really it's all it's just about living in the now and and understanding what we can do right now and what we have and what we can control is creating and making music and yeah. and being positive you know and and you know being a shoulder to lean on for some of our friends and all of that it's it's how we we're waging war you know there there's it's a destructive kind of vibe and world out there right now you know between just between the pandemic and politics and all the all the bs and uh literally <laughs> all we can do is create that's how you, to me that's how you defeat that sort of um destructive energy is just create whatever it is music art you know you just do and that's all we can do Literally. Right. And it looks like you have a beautiful playground in which to ah, create behind you. That's do. that's that's almost like a showroom in in an upscale music store. It's pretty impressive. Absolutely. 
but a, a lot of it is thanks to Sweetwater. Yeah, right. <laughs> we're saying we're like, we're like, yep, uh, <clears throat> that's because. Of, but um, yeah, and and we just we've been collecting gear, you know, in the entirety of hailstorms existence so it's like 23 20, years, yeah, 20 of, right. years of gear we, collection an old uh, fender Rhodes next to joe that was my first ever real instrument that my parents uh, bought for me at a flea market it's, it's this like 70s but some of the some of the keys are sticky and like <laughs> and there's like so many picks no just comment. like down it yeah let's yeah we'll just you know take that as as however you want but um but yeah i don't know it's it's a uh, we're very lucky to have all of these things and have you know a place to live and a place to create um during this crazy time you know, look seeing the keyboards you're flanked by keyboards and i keep forgetting because you know your you know seven inch leather heels and a, an explorer i forget that you're a really <laughs> good keyboard player like breaking like break in off the new record is like the, the 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 duet i guess you do with amy lee that's stunning Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, between myself and then uh, Josh, our bass player, he like so. I, I'm a. I started out on piano first, and then went to guitar because you know, yeah. At some point in time, you have to make a choice. You know, do you want to be James Hetfield or do you want to be Elton John? And I chose the James <laughs> Hetfield route. But um, it, everyone is faced with that choice, right? Everyone right. growing up. I, Elton um, James, but, yeah, it's a tough but, one. But, but Josh, uh, but Josh, our bass player, is a classically trained pianist, and so, like he can like sit down and play like. Mozart and Bach. Josh Mononoff. Jo yeah, we, call, we call, call him Josh Mononoff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which he, he will annoy people during sound check with that too. He's like, doo -doo -doo. I'm like, oh God, seriously. Can we mute the piano? Thank but, you. Yeah, really? But yeah, we, we, we went down a, a rabbit hole of, uh, we got like a bunch of synth stuff and there's a, there's a Rhodes bass over here. We have a Mellotron. Just, you know, whatever. You, I have a keytar upstairs uh, that yeah, I did not, yeah, I probably should have brought it down here to show it to you, but yes. El <laughs> Elton Hetfield, then. Yes, you got it. <laughs> at, at some point in time, those two end up merging. I like. I love. I'm like obsessed with Moogs. I'm. I just love them and like just adding in <clears throat> things into recordings. You know that you don't really notice, but all of a sudden, like a chorus just goes like, Poof, and you can't really explain why, but it's usually the Moog back right, that's, there either. Yeah, subliminal underdub, I guess. Yeah, yes. it's it's, it's got, to that's fun stuff. It's got balls. It's, it yeah, it does actually. Talking of reimagined, by the way, uh, that's a fascinating EP. You know, oh, you've, you've thank you. You've taken five of your, I mean, fan staples, and you've literally re reworked and reinvented them, and some of it's extremely creative, and I guess the Moog was involved in part of that. Now, who's playing the key? There's a lot of keyboard parts on that. Is, is that yourself or it's a Yeah, it's, it's a, we, 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 between myself and Josh, we kind of shared the load on that. And, right. and, uh, and it was so funny because we just had everything set up in front, like, like he had a keyboard in front of him, I had a keyboard in front of me, and I, I'm also strapped on with the guitar, and he's got the bass, and like we're all like in... Uh, you know, in the same room together, we're just kind of jamming with each other. And every now and then, we're like, oh, "Hey, I got an idea!" And like, we would do this, and like, "Oh, well, I got a different idea." Well, how about you play that part, and I'll play this part. So it was a lot of fun, but it was almost—I feel like it was more difficult to try to reimagine our own songs than it would have been just doing a cover EP. Oh, totally. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that's why we did the reimagine because we've been putting out what, what's it called? Re reanimate. Re yeah. <laughs> the uh, just a bunch everybody. of cover EPs in between records and. You know, just kind of looking at what's going on in rock right now. There's a lot of covers going out, and uh, we're like, let's not do it this time, and just shake instead, it up. Let's yeah, let's just cover ourselves and uh, just see what happens. And it was fun. We, <clears throat> I think we went in. We had like kind of an idea on one or two of the songs, like oh no, like acoustic like this. But uh, otherwise, like I remember, I get off. We we. It, we did like three different versions. Yeah, of that. it was yeah. just start. It started to go down some sort of weird reggae thing. We're <laughs> like, no. I no. think we're barking up the wrong tree here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love where that, that's one of my things that like I get off. It's, it's, it, the way you've reworked it, it almost sounds like it wouldn't be out of place in a, like a, a techno dance club. Yeah, it's weird. Right. It's really, it, it, has, it has a vibe to it, a no, good were, vibe. The, you know, the, 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 that started to come together. What's that pedal called? It's a boss pedal called the Slicer. Right. The slicer, the green guy with the two little boobops on it. Right. And, uh, that's Very the technical, technical terms term, here, the boobops. Yeah, yeah. boobops, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, you know, I was kind of going through those and had my baritone and just started hitting the chords. And and we're like, oh, no, that's cool. 
keep that keep that going. And uh, it sounds like a synth or some sort. Yeah, of Yeah, I thought it was a part, synth. I was going to ask you if it was no, a it's Moog a, thing. It's a guitar. Yeah. Oh wow. The slicer. Yeah. The secret that, weapon. So and so, how how hard was it? Like you've already mentioned, it wasn't an easy task. How difficult it is it to recover yourselves? It's it's tough because you're you're very close to the material. Whereas, like for me, covers are essentially pretty simple as long as you you know learn how to, how to play them correctly. <laughs> but but all you really have to think about is is well how how would how would Hailstorm do this or or even just just by playing it playing a cover in the exact way that it was recorded right. it's automatically different and automatic because you know I'm a female singer and and we do our own thing to it but when you're really close to your own songs especially songs like I get off that we've been playing for like a decade yeah you're like well where else can we possibly what? go with it I, I remember there was one point in time specifically in that song or I forget maybe it was my idea I'd like to think it was my idea but uh, we we we, re we, uh, <laughs> we but we reversed the the chord structure at the end um, so that it was uh, just uh, more ascending and less you know boxy, and I remember everything just being like oh that made it like more epic cool that's awesome and it, it breathed a little bit of new life into it to the point that after we recorded it when we were still touring we ended up doing yeah, like a the melded second half. the second half of the song in that chord structure because it was just fun yeah to breathe some new life and into it. you know working with nick rascal he's he's like a fifth member when we all get in there and we're just sitting there we're like all right what are we gonna do now and <laughs> and he's such a good captain of the team you know and like cool or actually let's move on and i'm like all right cool you know and uh it's it's fun working with him it's a so, joy so it was a pretty organic process that it wasn't you didn't labor things overthink things we no. we try not to. I think I think we dig ourselves into a hole whenever we we'd start, you know, like thinking about how clever something could be or like right. how we're you know as a band, you know, we just we're we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We just we're we're a bunch of rock dorks from Pennsylvania. Um but we want to be the best wheel we can be. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so so Sh shave off those square Yeah, yeah. Edges. yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's cool working with Nick too, because, uh, Nick, I think one of his absolute strengths is that when he is in the room with a band, he is usually a fan of that band. And he's done the same thing with Alice in Chains or, you know, the, the reemergence of corn, you know, all of the, he's, he's looking at it like, like of, like a fan, you know? And, and so he was able to kind of look at it and be like, all right, cool. I've heard these songs from you for you know for years and years you know what would i want to hear basically as yeah. a fan and so it was kind of nice to have that other opinion in there you know cool so he's so he's in yeah so there's a there's an emotional attachment is what you're saying because he yeah. actually likes it yeah. to begin with what a concept <laughs> right <laughs> yeah, working on something creative that you like helping people in the, in the creative process can you imagine if you didn't like it Oh, I don't think we'd. Yeah, we're can. we're bad liars, so I don't think yeah. we would actually be able to make it. <laughs> You'd hear sad finger solos. Sad solos. Oh. <laughs> now the breaking in with Amy that that sounds. I remember reading somewhere that that you guys did it in the same room at the same time, pretty much. We we did, um, and we were both surprised that uh, that Nick decided to do it that way because you know usually. If, if any type of duet that I've ever done, it's been, it's been done, you know, separately or at least, you know, like I will sing my part, then she will sing her part. And somehow we will blend them together, you know, in the aftermath. And we walked in the studio and it was literally two mics six feet apart before six feet apart was cool. Right. Um, <laughs> by the way. And uh, and and we both look at each other and we're like, are we is this just like for like rehearsal? Like, are we going to like go through it? Like, no, um, you're recording it at the same time and uh and i'm like oh well yeah but like if if we screw up though like we can do like overdubs he's like nope because of the bleed if one of you screws up we got to do the whole thing over again both of you and i'm like oh crap so um but but honestly like with with amy it was really easy i think we did a total of seven takes of the song and we yeah, ended up keeping the sixth one um but it was amazing one of the most amazing off off scene and uh and and uh off the recording moments was when we were sitting we were waiting for the engineer to kind of get something set up and 
Amy and I are sitting just, you know, she has her tea and and uh, she's like, do you do you think we should just kind of go over it? Because we haven't really sung it together in years, like since we were back touring with each other. And like, yeah, sure. And so like we just kind of like like tap on a keyboard like, OK, that's the key. And we proceed to sing the entire song a cappella together. Right. And, and like wow. it goes by and it's just. I remember then she she like looks at her and she's like, oh, I'm going to go get more tea. That sounded good. Those parts are great, right? I'm like, yeah, that'll be great. And I remember turning to Nick because he was in the control room. And I'm like, did you just see that happen? Do you know how difficult that would be with anybody else, uh, you know, in the world? And so it's just a true testament to how, what an amazing singer she is. And You girls are bona fide. Well, yeah, really? well it's funny. We started talking about it like it was like a tennis match because we're, we're, we're both like different styles of, of singing and everything. But but for whatever reason, we felt like it was a, a, a good match. You know, we were well matched and, and uh, it was just so much fun for me because, you know, I, I I get to sing with a lot of great people. But, you know, a, you in particular. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> but uh, but Amy is just another level of of uh, talent. And it was just a, such a beautiful feeling yeah, when to she do sings that. and says something. You just believe it. Yeah. She's like got she, one of those things. Just she like, wow. could l quite literally like, you know, read the nutrition facts, of, uh, you know, of a cereal box. <laughs> and you would be like, whoa. <laughs> cool. So it was a lot of fun. Vitamin yeah. K. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> right. What is vitamin K anyway? Who knows? Uh, it's the special K. Yeah, something yeah. like that. The, and the thing that got me, I, mean, I would imagine being in the same room at the same time, like looking at the video, like that. I would imagine that like the, like the the eye-to-eye the -eye interaction must have been quite, like, m for want of a better word, moving or inspiring. Absolutely. I don't think that our takes would have come out the same if we hadn't been doing it, you know, and ebbing and flowing with each other and because you're, you're, you're matching each other at certain times, but then there was also the, all of these separation parts that you have to kind of land together. So right. it, it was just amazing to do that live and just in real time and be able to kind of look over. And we did get a little emotional afterward because originally the song break in was just, you know, a love song and, um, to whoever, and you know, uh, certainly not to you. I'm not. <laughs> I know. Kidding. I know. Stop um, crying, Joe. I, yeah, I did. You want a tissue? Um, but uh, but uh, you know, we started talking about it afterward, and I'm like, you know, the song takes on a whole new meaning with me singing it with you, and she's like, yeah, it's almost like we have each other's backs, and we see each other for you know for who we are, and and our just showing this unity and support for each other. And, and at the time, this is again, before COVID at the time, like we thought that was a very important thing as, as women to do. And as, as two people that have created their own empires separately for people to see that, no, we're actually friends and we support each other on and off, you know, recording. And so, uh, so then, then all of a sudden Amy's like, Oh, we, we can't, I no, I can't get misty right now. It's fine. And so, so yeah. you're saying my hot take on the competition between females and rock is just nothing. Yeah. Nope. There's, nothing there's there. no, no cat fights, rats. no cat fights. Rats indeed. No, I, I, <laughs> I, I went, I went on a bit of a rabbit hole hunt on, on the YouTubes and I found, you know, a, a fan film of you guys doing it together in 2012 somewhere. And yeah. there was that. There was an emotional. This is my big word from Google for the day, by the way. There was an emotional symbiosis going on, even back then. But on the actual recording, you can. It's it's palpable. There's an emotion there that's the, yeah. that you can't fake that stuff. Mm. And how much of that do you think was was due to the fact you were to doing it together? Um, I think I think it had everything to do with that. And I think that um, if we had not recorded it the way that we did it would have been different too because it would have been me trying to be the best singer I can be and her trying to be the best singer she can be and and then blending the two together and it would still have been awesome but I think that the fact that the two of us were in the same room and again this is a testament to Nick Raskin's big idea um was I think that he knew that he was going to be able to get that kind of a take out of us uh, you know by doing it that way um because yeah I remember back in the day doing that song live and the just you could feel like the mood and the air change right. when she would walk up and start singing with me and uh 
and uh, and of course I would hear the hoops and hollers of people that were like at this in the audience before that even happened. Who's like, I can see Amy, I can see her, you know, um, because she's a rock star. But um, but yeah, I I think that uh, the bond that she and I have and the support and the absolute respect for each other um, that we have and that we've had for years, um, absolutely I think was captured on that on that take. Yeah, it's cool because the, the video I watched kind of reminded me of, because it was you at the start, then she came on. It's almost like that Don't Let the Sun Go Down with, um, with Elton oh, John yeah. and George Michael, which is stunning. And it's they so were doing beautiful. the same thing. They were, their performances were based on what the other guy was doing. It was kind of remarkable. And, I, and the funny thing about like, Nick's approach is I, I'm a big Amy Winehouse fan and the, and the mm-hmm. footage of her recording with Tony Bennett, you know, actually oh, on, yeah. the, on the same mic... I guess that's the only way someone like that can get the emotion. You have to see what the other person's doing, almost mm-hmm. literally see the, the throat and the and the, the mouth move. So, it's one of the most beautiful things that I, I miss terribly about not having a gig for a while and being able to jam with my guys on stage. Because when you are riding that wave with each other, and all of a sudden you're locked in with each other, and for some reason are are it, it's almost like you, you know, you synchronize and you're taking in the same breaths and releasing the same, you know. And, so it's the language, you know. Yeah. Every band develops their own language that's, together, and that's and, the good stuff. Oh, it is the good stuff. That's why. <laughs> that's why we we just can't, man. We can't play with a click track or tracks live because I don't know if what, would it to me would it even be worth it? All that work and all that travel around the world just to like. Just to play the same thing every single yeah. night. Like that's that's the fun is the excitement. You know, we're up there experience it, experiencing it with thousands of people. Like I don't know where this is going to end, and that's yeah. amazing. No, <laughs> that's a, it. it's it's funny because I, I just went through like one of my things I've been doing to keep myself sane in, during this time, even though you know Sweetwater thankfully is back at work. You know, with masks and all that good stuff and oh, social yeah. distancing, is I've been bike riding, believe it or not, and mm. cool not running over woodland creatures or anything like that. But <laughs> what I didn't, I, I put the, I, I did a loop of the first four Van Halen albums, which oh, were recorded nice. 79, 80, 81 and 82. And it's just organic magic. Like yeah. there's no, there's, Eddie's hardly done any doubling of guitars or underdubs. It's just four guys making magic. And that's one of the things, once again, my obsequious word coming in, one of the reasons I'm a big Hailstorm fan is, you guys have that it's it's a it's a gang it's a family absolutely. but it's a gang if that makes yeah. sense like, oh I wouldn't, absolutely like, wouldn't want to mess with you guys you know even, <laughs> if, even rj with his tape on his ears i don't know <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah thank god that phase is over um <laughs> rj goes in phases um what's it gonna be today pink Pants, okay. We're uh, party we're, on. we're party on. Um, <laughs> last, last last time we were thinking, he, he had um he had a bunch of uh, suits uh, from this uh, this clothing they were called oppa suits or whatever. And so like one has flamingos, the other one has popsicles, whatever. Whatever. And he had a matching tie for each one of them. Like you go. <laughs> um, but uh, but but it's it it is a gang. Drummers, man. It is a gang, and uh, we've all you know. Obviously, I you know RJ's my little brother, so I've you know known him for his entire life. But uh, but with, you know, Joe and Josh, like there's nobody on earth that knows me the way that these guys do, like not even my parents, you know, and and so to have that and to have the experiences with each other and we've experienced things together that nobody in this world could possibly fathom. And and the fact that we still have that tight bond and, you know, the 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 uh, the the uh, bus jokes and bus humor um, is very much alive in the group texts nowadays. Good, good. Um, and That's where uh, the hangs happen. Yeah, and and uh, I wouldn't want to do it with anybody else. So it's it's very cool. Yeah, that's why being in a band is fun. We were, you know, we were we were gonna for this interview. We like plugged in some amps, and we were gonna kind of just do like a two person electric thing, and it, it ended up not working out sonically just because with of the stu- yeah it it just couldn't happen but we we're gonna make the point about you know just improv and and speaking to each other and that language that we were talking about because lizzie and i do that when we just sit here and jam together you know if i'm going off trying to make a moment happen she's 
down there making other moments happen and, and we're just like hearing and feeling and reacting and, and, and there, it's beautiful there's something so crazy that goes on in your body when you know that it could be an incredible moment that you make happen that can never happen again or it can be a complete train wreck and be horrible <laughs> and and you and you know it's only going to be one or the other that's, <laughs> and man, that's up to you yeah that's where music is like living and breathing to me like it's because, a real thing like if you're in front of a few thousand people and you're whew. everyone's improvising on stage all four of us at the same time and you, you just don't know, you know, you jump off a cliff and see if you packed a parachute, you know. And <laughs> right. yeah. Did I remember the parachute? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. And it's amazing. Could just like, be dirty clothes. It's the best feeling in the world, you know. That's, like I was saying, that's living. And we, we did the, we were doing the math. I believe that it's, it's probably been over 15 years since the last time that I went this long without a gig, without Yeesh. a show in right. front of people. And, uh, and it's really, it's like, it's starting to poke at my brain. Yeah. It's starting to be like, "Hey, what's going on? Who are you?" But, um, but yeah. Are you guys pon- are you guys pondering doing a live stream thing? He says inquisitively, prompting, hoping, praying. Yeah, I mean, uh, we we've we definitely have talked about it. We've done a few little things, but not a, not a full band thing. And we're gonna make a record first, you know. Oh, cool. We've, we were taking this year to write a record anyway. We I think we had like twenty shows booked for the year. Gotcha. Wasn't anything massive and uh i think we're about halfway through writing maybe more and we just got to get in the studio and do it you know and then then we'll figure out what comes after that and luckily there's a whole bunch of people figuring that out ahead of us i mean i'll, <laughs> a I'll good go way to do things but. i'll go back to playing bowling alleys oh, yeah, that's fine with me yeah <laughs> no, I hear you. well that's <laughs> that that to me is the mark of a true musician it's not about i remember i did something this is a weird segue but um, when I was working at Fender for Jackson and EVH, um, we did a, like a Fender University thing for some guys, like 20 guys came in and built a, a custom shop guitar and had some lectures and stuff. Mm. And they had Ingve Malmsteen come in as a special guest. Oh, nice. And he performed in front of like 20 people and played like it was Wembley Stadium. I'd never yep. seen... Was there was, a fan on him? Of course there was. He was and, and he, he was kicking <laughs> picks out. He was kicking picks during his sound check. That's like awesome. it's it's that's like awesome. he's that what you see on stage is just what he is and that's the thing i love about you guys is the fact that it's not an alter ego it's just who you are thank you man thanks i we appreciate that and i'm, I'm glad that that shows through and like like we we're saying before we're terrible liars so yeah. <laughs> hopefully whatever we are is <laughs> well, <laughs> and, a good thing. and like you and it doesn't matter where you are in the you know we're lifers in this we're just music people and it's what we're gonna do like lizzie was saying whether we go back to bowling alleys in the local bar that's what we're gonna do i don't know do we some mall like gigs oh. oh there you go yeah right yeah. in the middle of the mall we used to do that back in the day that was some of our first the first <laughs> shows that hailstormer did were was at like sam goodies but they had like the glass and the wall you know so it was just a rotating audience which was great because at the time we had like six songs so we Except just played movie the mannequin <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was great. Actually, that, that, yeah, that was a trip. Talking of the body language, the one thing that fascinated me was number one. I really enjoyed the, your your impromptu version of that song, by the way. But I was watching the camp, like the eye, like the eye contact and the chemistry. You guys were feeding off each other. It was fascinating to watch because it was it was the real deal. It wasn't you weren't going through the motions. Oh, I, thanks, I, man. I feel like I've. I've reappreciated that. It's it's not like I, I've never taken those those things for granted. Like uh, back in the day, uh, Joe and I used to do these like four hour acoustic gigs at the local bars just to kind of make ends meet. And I I'd get up on the bar and you know like we'd <laughs> sing crazy on you or whatever. And we did a bunch of we we played acoustic like it was an electric show. But um, yeah, there was no sitting. There was no sitting now. Right. Yeah. Stand but up. um. But, you know, those things are like, you know, we obviously like have chemistry and and th- that's absolutely undeniable. But when you're in that moment and like I said, it's like this weird, like almost um, not like goosebump stuff, but just kind of like this vibration that you kind of you get on with this other person. And and uh, like I said, you're riding that same wave. And um, and I think especially now you just kind of. I don't know. I I feel like in my brain, not that I would ever take that for granted, but I absolutely know I will never take that for granted. And that feeling. Yeah. Even even just, you know, we're playing in front of a 
computer and a camera and it's just you watching and i you know it's gonna go out everywhere so yeah. you just you know you want to lock you, in you gotta but also yeah. nick's watching and yeah. that's just you know i know it's like, nerve-wracking in itself <laughs> am i moving my fingers fast enough is he impressed I don't know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's funny that's funny but it's it's i mean because the bottom line is music is emotion and you guys you know that's obviously what drives you which is why yeah. you which is why i know you weren't kidding when you said i'd play a bowling alley <laughs> no, That'd be a good bowling alley, but yeah. Oh, it, it, I didn't. Yeah, it, as long as like, we get a free game afterwards. Yeah, or at least put some pizza. <laughs> yeah, there you, you know, go. Like, there's nothing like bowling alley pizza. I'd settle for a hot dog. <laughs> hot dogs, yeah. <laughs> bowling alley hot dog, yikes! <laughs> <laughs> How would you describe this? If like if you were if you were giving me the elevator pitch on this fine product, how would you describe this? Pretend I I didn't know who you were, or why you did it. Go. Ooh. <laughs> So what you have here is Hailstorm Reimagined. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Joe. That's yes. right. Yeah. And uh, what we've done is take songs that we had previously released and it's over reimagined them. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Um, and the vinyl is orange. And the vinyl totally is orange. collectible. Very cl that is cool, that. Highly actually. collectible. And, and uh, there's a version of the Dolly Parton song, I Will Always I was, Love You, that, that Whitney true. Houston also had a we hit did. With. We did commit to killer. one cover. One it cover. It is killer, Lizzie. Yeah, Lizzie. Lizzie did destroy that. You get to hear the full Lizzie Hale vocal experience. It's kind of cool. It was. I mean, it's it's a it's a worth like that and breaking vocally are fairly. They're both very moving. Now, that's a fairly. I would imagine that's a pretty intimidating song to want to put on vinyl. Like, I, I I know you've done it live. <clears throat> what was your What was your What was your motivation? Well, honestly, the motivation was uh, before I could talk myself out of it, we just decided to do it. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like I already I said yes. And now before I can think about it, I'm jumping out of the airplane, you know, um, which I think is how I've been living my life for the past couple months. Just say yes. No, to I, but I, remember, I remember the conversation because it's hilarious because she always has a piano thing in the show where we all we call it the Miller Lite halftime show. And we go off <laughs> they, the side, they go have a beer have and a beer I and do a couple of piano and um <laughs> She started like working in these funny like these covers and watching all these hard rock metal dudes start singing along to Adele. Yeah, and they were like, it. "Come on, do I will I will always yeah, love do you. It, do, do it, it. God, do it." <laughs> I'm like I, I'm like that's an impossible you like. Just that, hear everyone and I. And I yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it is pretty funny to like look out at like the poster child for like biker masculinity and them get emotional from from playing like i you know because you you start off you like you're doing like i'll do like separate ways by journey right. and everyone's like yeah yeah we can use it and then i'll do like an adele song and everyone's like well oh, okay okay and then like you go into like the total cheese factor which is just the i will always love you and they're just bawling and it's just great <laughs> it's great it's like i got you i got you you know the words you know the words that's yeah. what i remember seeing like god this is going back a few years to download and you guested with Corey taylor doing an acoustic set oh yeah in the tent and when he opened i mean download or donnington i still call it donnington monsters rock yeah. But that's one of the hardest audiences in the world in terms of, you know, they're there to see Slipknot and Pantera and Slayer. Yeah. And Corey Taylor has the the melons <laughs> to walk on stage and open with Tiny Dancer and kill yeah. it. <laughs> and and, and it's the same thing. You see these bikers going, <laughs> yeah, she's tiny and she can dance. Yeah, <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> seamstress for the band yeah. <laughs> it's great i i and that, i love that about Corey too he's so he's, awesome, he's always man. he's always just been absolutely fearless at and i mean honestly the very first time we ever met Corey taylor we heard him before we saw him in in the hallways he's singing at the top of his lungs lady marmalade Get out. in the hallways of whatever <laughs> where were we I, uh, yeah mates, wherever we I were think. we're at mates yeah and uh and he's singing it and i'm like is that is that Corey Taylor singing Lady Marmalade? Like, and then and, and he then had he, four like quadruple espressos, and we're like, oh, that was nice of him. And then we realized they were for him. They were yeah. all for him. Not, yeah, not, yeah that, that, those were his his four big espresso things. But yeah, 
But yeah, they, they, I I love that about people. And I I don't know. It's like I I there's a cheesy bone in my body. You know, I I grew up listening to a lot of, you know. 80s metal and and I, I I also really enjoy Bette Midler every now and then and the, all of those things I were some Madonna and and so it like those things are just about owning everything that you are not just yeah absolutely I've covered Metallica too and I love that but I I like having those little things and especially like during a live set like if you're gonna like get up there and scream your head off for one song be like oh no 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 wait 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 let's uh let's do some i will always love you, <laughs> yeah. you know? wait, or, or still of the night too. i've seen you guys do oh, still yeah. the night that's oh, great yeah. too that's a belter man if i had to play that right oh, now i know i, I was just thinking i'm just like Whoa. how that goes yeah that's that that's one work. of the weirdest arrangements ever oh yeah and it was a bona fide hit and it makes no sense on paper it's like what it was you go from crazy, here I... to here back to there and then here what <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then all of a sudden it ends it's got the full alphabet of parts yeah, and it's, it's, up. it's one of those things when you listen to it and you don't think about it, then you try and play it and it's going, what drugs were they on? <laughs> yes, Because it's, it's out there. And and even that rhythm, the... Like, it's like, it's not... Like, like if, if, if I were sitting down and saying, well, I'm going to write a song for, like, radio right now, it's going to be like, no, we have to, like, keep the heads bop and maybe, like, simplify it a little bit. It's like, it's such a trippy... Yeah, rhythm too it's awesome yeah, it's but it's great, great. It's, it goes back to what you're saying it was genuine and what however that came out there was no other way that it could possibly no, be it's, and, it's what and it that's is. why you're it right. was a hit yeah you're right no you're absolutely right what's great about this conversation is i've got a, a whole slew of questions in front of me hidden so it looks like i'm smart <laughs> and I, and I the secret's out and i haven't well now people have seen my videos they know i'm i can hardly walk and chew gum but the <laughs> The great thing is I haven't asked you one of those questions because it's just going where it should go. But I am going to oh, ask you a question. Cool. So what is your what is your creative process? So so like you you have a song idea, how do you two guys as guitarists and band members and musicians work together? When do you start thinking about what you'll play versus what Joe will play or vice versa? When does that whole thing mesh if that makes sense? When do when does one guitar part become two? And how would you do it? And that was the longest question ever. I, that was great, though. <laughs> well, you know, the, really, we figure out who's playing what when we start rehearsing it to play it live. But ah. for the writing stuff, it's just whoever is, has a part. Play, has an idea. You know, it, all, it, it doesn't have to make sense yet because it's studio and not live. And There and, uh, there have been many songs that I've recorded one part that you end up doing live or vice versa. Yeah. Like we end up switching parts uh, just depending on what works because, uh, well, so sometimes it has to do with the fact that I'm singing and, and so what's gonna not necessarily knock off the dance of me singing and playing and performing at the same time, but, but, uh, but also, you know, what works better for in a, in a band aspect and in a visual aspect, what part, is better for me versus better for you, depending on, you know, the song and what we're doing. Um, so it's, yeah. And in these like covid -y times. Uh, <clears throat> oh yeah, it's a whole just, different process just, now. <laughs> just writing all the songs, we, we, we've written just a boatload of them, but I think there's like, there's a little under 10 that are we know are like, all right, those are good enough. They they can, they hold up. We're, we're really harsh self-editors. But uh, lately she's been, she writes these songs, just her, her vocal and a guitar and a click, and then I'll do it up and add parts or take parts or, oh, change this, you know, finger bang out some drums and and send it back to her, and she kind of redoes things. Or, like, I, I make instrumentals all the time. I'm like, check this out, or here's a melody idea. Try this, and mm -hmm. she'll take that. So, it, you know, there's a, there's a lot of ways to skin that cat. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think for the most part, we... we you know, it, it all depends on who has something special and whatever that is, you know, right. and, and do we both agree that it's worth moving forward? Um, Chase the excitement. Yeah, That's but, all. but it is but it is funny because since these, you know, we've been, you know, just kind of it's literally like been the two of us doing the bulk of the work of that. Um, it's been really fun to see how how different we are as players and how much it really works when we come together, right. you know, whereas like separately, like each of us takes a different approach to the guitar. 
Um, but when we start adding in, like, like if, if I'm like, I'm up there and I'm, I write a riff to a click and, and do it like I, I simplified my process. I have a couple different writing stations. Um, and I kind of went back to where I was at, at a, as a teenager when I only had a four track task cam recorder, tape recorder, you know, and uh, it's like, well, I only have these four things things that I can do so it might as better all be good um and I I love doing that and I love simplifying um but then I'll take it down yeah you know, I'll, I'll show it to Joe and he'll be like oh that's that's great and and we'll have like the basis layer of, of whatever I did and then the the parts that you end up adding on top of that for some reason just like just make everything sound great and oh, thanks, everything Liz. sound better you know um but it's but then you'd like take certain things away. But if you take away, you know, my nucleus of it and like he could he could easily like play the parts that I played, but then it just sounds different. So it's, there's something right. about the way that I play and the way that you play yeah, squished you together differently and it speaks yeah. differently. And, you know, you're the pushing or pulling, you know, we all hit the rhythm a little in a different, different spot. Yeah. Thickens it out. Yeah, I was cool. going to ask you yeah. about that. So, you know, like you mentioned earlier, that some a part that you might be playing, if Joe takes it over, vice versa, I guess it would morph immediately to to a Joe part or a Lizzie part by virtue of the fact you 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 approach the instrument differently, you play differently, you yeah. attack differently. Um, um, one one example actually was uh, when we on the second record um, we have a song called Rock Show, and uh, and you ended up writing the lead, but then I ended up doing it because you said something about well it's like a, a melodic lead and as a singer that's kind of how i approach those things anyway so he's like well you should be doing that so it's like i don't remember yeah that, but I, yeah that, i believe but you. yeah that's <laughs> awesome <laughs> go me yeah, yeah. good idea joe <laughs> wow. but wow, what uh a, but what yeah. a giving the, a, a lead guitar player giving the lead to someone else were you okay right? were you sick that day <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, you know what? He's he, that's probably why he doesn't remember. He's just yeah, he pushing was, that I, I away. Yes, yeah, yeah, he yeah, it's some trauma. Yeah. It's some like <laughs> <laughs> some guitar player trauma. Yeah, a medical it's, blackout. Yeah, I did what? <laughs> I gave you a solo. <laughs> <laughs> You're already the singer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And talking of the right, so Lizzie, like when you come up with the riff. Are you thinking vocal melody or just this is a cool riff? What will I do with it? What's your th and and with you too, Joe? Are you have you've got a th do you think vocally as well as just oh this is a cool riff? Or are you thinking what can this is cool because I hear this over it? Um, I think that we both think in both terms, but I think in my in my position, um, I I've, I really enjoy. I, I, it's it's a two part process because usually I'll be like sit down and I really like this riff that I'm playing, um, but then you take it to the next step and you kind of like farm it out a little bit and I and that's when my brain has to kick in because, you know, we talk about this all the time. Like my fingers don't have brains, like they can't think for themselves, <laughs> so it has to be kind of brained out first. So I'll be like, all right, I like this riff, and then um, I will in turn end up singing it almost and and uh and then going back and reworking it from what i was from what my brain is telling me what to do and what what natural reaction and also something that is different that uh that i i i don't know many other people who who have talked about doing this i'm i'm i i'm sure that there are millions um but uh but there is a different gear when if I have a riff and now I'm writing a verse around it and I always make sure that I am singing and playing at the same time because what ends up happening is that the riff morphs itself oh. into whatever I'm singing, but then vice versa. So there has to be that relationship to it. Now I can easily just do those two things separately and that's fine, right. but it is really funny to like, to hear it, everything kind of congeal together, um, and I know you write you know, from your from your brain too. But uh, yeah, like I said, we me, kind of meet in the middle. Took me far too long to figure that out. Uh, <laughs> 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 you're sitting there just playing like nothing's coming, and then you realize that like your brain writes better riffs than just your fingers, you know? Right. And it's actually more interesting because you're like you know like I want something that's like dun, 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 you know, and then you got to figure out what you're thinking. <laughs> At least I do because I don't have that immediate connection where it you know 
I'm working on it. That takes apparently a little bit of practice, which you know I don't know, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, r- r- riff writing is occasionally though you you just pick up a guitar and just you, and the first is, thing yeah. you play is like oh no, there's something to that now farm you know yeah gotcha. go for it. Now talking of the process, so say for example you've you know like like you've done this morphing thing between your hand and your brain and your voice and your fingers, and you've got a cool verse. Does that take you to like? Do you start hearing where it needs to go from there? Like the bridge, like the pre-chorus and the chorus. Does that how it works for uh, you? Or so, sometimes. Sometimes I feel like I have um, one of my strengths is being able to figure out where to go next. If that's how it is, um, a lot of times it's working backwards too. Sometimes it starts when all I have is a cool title. And sometimes all I'll have is the chorus. Sometimes sometimes what I think is the chorus is actually the pre-chorus. It needs to go somewhere bigger. So um, I think it's just, honestly, it's, it's you can't settle at all. And you know when you're settling. Like, you can't lie to yourself. Like, right. you know, like, like no, oh, this can't can... You can lie to yourself. Well, you can. Easy. You can. No, it's fine. You, you can. <laughs> but then it ends up, you know, biting you in the but butt you know. later. So I call it's it like, like ironing because there's always like... <laughs> like you sketch out a song idea and you just it's hard to rec- not recognize but to accept and then move forward mm-hmm. when something isn't quite right even the tiniest thing it's like there's a wrinkle there and you just got to iron it out you got to do it right yeah. and right you keep doing it over and over and going through the song again and again and and then you really find out if you did good like if we if Nick we send a song to Nick or something like hey is this cool and then you listen to it back and instead you know these days it's over email but or but like back in the day you'd walk in you listen in a room with someone do a new idea and you immediately you automatically know, know all the things yeah. that you've missed and did Be- wrong <laughs> because all of a sudden somebody else is in the room and you're, you're like, like oh, oh i could have no. done that better but we're um, getting better though because that it's something you gotta learn you gotta learn how to iron that stuff mm-hmm. out and be able to make it a thing and i think it's so important to to be willing and in, and completely ready to work so hard on something just to end up throwing Throw it, away. it away um or or starting again from the top I, i've written there's some songs that we've done that i've written four different versions of certain songs and they're all in different like oh well this is sped up well this is a completely different course well now you know what honestly i like the title but the subject matter isn't really getting there so let me just rewrite that or even like spending 20 30 hours making this demo you know like just getting it right and then just being like yeah well yeah whatever next song (laughs) but but that's important because you inherently take those lessons that you learned from your supposed failure of a track and you take those lessons into the next thing so you're just constant so for me it's it's been especially being home with all this time to write it's been this constant state of evolution and also risk taking like okay that's dumb but i kind of it makes me laugh so (laughs) i should probably do that you know um and i find myself even going back to like the riff writing like i find myself like being in the kitchen being like well i want something like a bomb but deep up moved on it's like Mm. all right get out the voice memo it's like you're doing riff thing i find myself talking to myself a lot where I'm like, it's like I'm leaving breadcrumbs for myself. Like, okay, so this is in the wrong key, but I really want it in D. But this is how the actual rhythm should go, but not on the, not vocally <laughs> on guitar. Here we go, one, two. And I'm in the other <laughs> room, like, what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. No. I mean, that's that's the one great thing about technology is, is sometimes it's it's funny. You can get an idea and you go. That's really cool. I'll never forget it. Then something happens and it's gone forever. Yeah. I can't wait for Elon Musk's Neuralink, the brain thing that he's developing, because we'll be able to think. Just plug in. Like I like I can like straight into Pro Tools. Yeah. Yeah. Like I can hear like a whole song sometimes, like the whole thing, but then you start doing it and it starts to get washed out as (laughs) as you are working on it. You know, like the bass, the drums. I get like yes. I, so I can't wait to I, just be like. Argh! I did that. I did that the other Just night. There. I it was it was literally three thirty a.m. and I'm like wide awake and I have this like melody thing in my head, but I also kind of have the riff in my head. Everything's in my head. I have not picked up an instrument, so I had to go into the closet because it's the quietest spot because I didn't want to wake anybody up. And and I'm like in the closet and I'm like 
beat bopping and doing the thing and he's like all right all right all right so that's the melody but underneath the melody here's the riff and he's like here's the riff and whatever and then you go back to bed you think it's over right but now no. you've opened up pandora's box no, now your brain's it's just not it's like oh but here's the where the bridge is gonna is supposed to go damn it now i gotta get up again and do this so back I, like, in the closet all, yeah back in the closet yeah <laughs> I just can't get can't get me out of that closet. <laughs> that's that's kind of. Fun. I love these insights because that's at least, at least I know I'm not a, not a completely insane because you know part of the I don't go into a closet but pretty close. <laughs> I think I've got a closet in here. <laughs> and it's funny what you were saying about the mistake process. I mean, one of the things that always fascinated me was you know I'm a um, one of my um, guilty secrets is I'm a huge George Michael fan. Huge. Mm. Love it. I think the guy's one of one of just a brilliant songwriter and singer. Yeah. And I remember reading that Careless Whisper, he recorded the whole thing for like mega bucks and went, No, that's crap. I'm gonna redo it. Mm. And that's so, that yeah. that's what you were talking about. It's like, yeah, that's not where it should be. And that's yeah, gotta yeah. be quite ballsy to to actually go into a major studio, spend I think six figures and then go, nah. Nope. But oh, we we've heard stories about uh, full albums being that way, and there are certain bands that are, you know you record an entire album with somebody, and it's just not right. And you've spent you know all this time and all of this Didn't money. Foo Fighters spend a million I, bucks on a record and just throw I, it away. I feel like there that was one of them. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I, I I honestly, it doesn't matter. Like we like even as a band, you know, we like we. <laughs> We try not to discuss things like money or time or any of those things because ultimately that doesn't matter. What matters is what you put out there and do you actually like what you put out? Do you love the song? Are you proud of that? Because that is is forever. That's your legacy. That that's the you know that's your art. That's what you got into it for. So I mean you know it doesn't it doesn't matter and 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 that's why we we have this conversation a lot too um especially being on a major label whereas like you it, inherently you you get into a lot of these like you know just kind of mexican standoffs and being like well this is going to be a hit and like yeah but i can't see myself singing that you know like it, there was a there was a period of time where i was doing a lot of um co-writing and we write these songs and sometimes, yeah, I could absolutely hear that on the radio or I could hear it like being a pink song or something else. And 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 just for whatever reason, I'm just like, yeah, but I can't see me actually getting up and doing it and I'm not going to enjoy that. And regardless of whether whether it would be a hit for us or not or make anybody any money, that's not important, you know, so. Yeah, standards. That's, standards. Yeah. yeah, and I think it goes back to the emotional attachment too. Like the thing that struck me about watching the video of of Break In, it's like you're not you're not phoning that performance in. Just your <laughs> your whole it's it's moving to watch. Throwing shapes. No, it was <laughs> yeah, but you're but the <laughs> like the face like the visual expressions both the intensity on your face and Amy's face that wasn't you can't fake that. I don't care no. how good the, Robert De Niro couldn't do that stuff. <laughs> even even De Niro. Even mm. De Niro. <laughs> like, you know, That's maybe awesome. Bronson could, you know, Charles Bronson maybe. 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 <laughs> maybe. <laughs> he just has that one face for, <laughs> yeah. for everything. Death Wish, 17. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to close by asking, first and once again, thank you so much for uh, doing this. No, i got to be honest with you, you I was really worried, like it was my idea to do the acoustic performance first. I'm like, Damn, how do we follow that? But I think you've <laughs> kicked it in the ass with the conversation because yeah. I because I you've engaged me. Not that that's oh, hard. I'm glad. I don't, don't know if that's a compliment or a <laughs> <laughs> Well, we 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 love you, man. And yeah, you man. you've been a part of our family for so many years and and you're one of those people that like we only have a handful of these people in our lives where it doesn't matter how much time has gone by or whatever. We just pick up right where we left off and um, you know, always, you know, greeted with a smile and just, uh, we, we love you. And, and so we're just happy to be here. And, and one of my favorite things I've seen in the last few months is your Iron Maiden rejection letter. Oh. It's the coolest thing. Oh yeah. Awesome. I, and I remembered, I remember I was at university doing a math degree and I saw the, my friend said, you should do this. And I'm like, it was one of your, it's almost like a Lizzie Hale thing. It's like, say yes. And then worry about it afterwards. Yeah. So I was yeah. like, what have I got to lose? Because I'd seen them, I'd seen the unsigned Iron Maiden, and they, they were frighteningly good. You could tell there was something there. 
That's cool. And like that Eddie so was, awesome. believe it or not, was a paper mache head. No, uh, that's awesome. Like hung behind them with a hose pipe coming out with dry ice coming out of it. It was. Wow. And look at so them cool. now. Now they've got yeah. jets and yeah, monsters and, and, and yeah, and everything. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so it was cool. this paper mache thing that they, you know, they just chewed up paper and made it into this sort of kind of sort of a skull ish. That's so, awesome. But yeah, small. Cool. It's a, I guess it, once again, it's a passion driven thing. So to close, what I'd like to do is, you know, by the way, this young lady, you, this is a great, great piece. The amount of people who've gone, this is one of the best things they've read in this oh, publication. Oh, I'm so glad. No, because it comes from it comes from within, and the photography is not bad at all. <laughs> We're an in-house operation at yeah. the moment. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great though. Um, what would like you know? These are weird and wonderful times. Well, I don't know about the wonderful thing. But, well, I guess it's, it can be. It's up to you what you make of it. Like you say, you yeah. can't control it. The only thing you can control, control is what you do today in the now and how you react to what it is. And you guys seem to be reacting well because you're smiling a lot. And once again, you can't <laughs> fake that. And you're being creative. What would your advice be to people, young and old, watching this who are going, you know, I used to play, you know, three times a month. Now I haven't played in 10 months. What would your advice be to someone to sort of keep the wheels, keep the passion, keep the fire burning? You just got to, I mean, as dumb as it sounds, you just got to play. Yeah. Like, you just have to play. Like, even when you're not feeling it sometimes, it's a bit of a slump or something. And it's like anything, like anything creative or creation, like it's not always going to be, you know, coming up roses. Like, oh, yeah, great feel. You know, sometimes it turns into... Like, I got to get through this hump, you know, and that's and then it feels even better when you finally get to the other side. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the great stuff, you know. Yeah. And it not the, the good feelings, the bad feelings, all of that stuff, n none of it sticks forever, you know, and, and it's 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 about that roller coaster ride. And and uh, and like Joe said, uh, you know, I instead of instead of freaking out about how like. I haven't had a gig like because we went through that phase. We're just like, I don't know, like the future is unknown. What's going to happen? Like, are we ever going to like tour again? Are we ever going to like do it the way that we once did? And the truth is, is that we don't know. We just don't know. So um, so but instead of worrying about that and thinking about that, you know, and and pining for the way things used to be or worried about things that may or may not happen in the future, um, try to find new ways to excite yourself with that. Like for, for me, it was about, you know, okay, instead of this being the only studio down here, now I have two writing stations up there. One's by the piano, one's like a little riff station that's like overlooking the lake. It's awesome. It like, just like shake it up. And, and, um, and also like, again, like what I was saying kind of in the, in the interview, I decided instead of me starting a song and being like, all right, I'm going to build it up and it's going to be a tr triple quad guitars with like, you know, bells and whistles and all these harmonies and everything. Let me simplify it. Let me focus on the song. And also, how would I play it live if I had people in front of me right now? That's a whole awesome thing, too. So just, you know, shake it up and remember that music is always going to be there for you. That's 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 why you started picking it up. You didn't pick it up because, um, you know, like we we didn't pick up our instruments thinking, well, we're going to get in the arenas. We're going to win a Grammy. Well, we're going to do all yourself. this stuff. I, <laughs> <laughs> no. It's about the girl. Yeah. It, it was about the girls all along. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you, you, were, you were drawn to it in this almost, it was almost not even your choice. Right. You were drawn to it for some reason. You, were, you, Nick, were drawn to the guitar and like, I don't know, but it feels great to play. And so I think that that's, that's something that you got to hold on to. Uh, yeah, and, and plus playing guitar, even if you're feeling bad or good or whatever, it always makes uh, it better. Yeah. You know, that's a, sometimes that's the hardest thing, isn't it, getting started? Yeah. In fact, one of the coolest things I heard, and it wasn't in an interview, someone just said it in passing, in fact, it was someone who worked with a guy called Bob Bailey. He said, the cool thing about any musical instrument is it's the one relationship in your life that will give you back exactly what you give it. Mm. So if oh, you, give, yeah. it, if you wow. give it nothing, you'll get nothing. And that's a cool yeah. way of looking at it. So sometimes I look at my guitar and go, I don't really feel like it, but I do like it, and I'd like something back in return. And mm. it's amazing how 
those three minutes of I don't want to do this turn into three hours later, like, what the hell happened? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's such a beautiful way to look at that. I'm going to stick that yeah. in the old noodle. <laughs> yeah, <it's> a, <laughs> you, you put in a lick and you get a lick. There you go. But yeah, I agree. It's, it's funny how you said, like, going back to the basics, because I guess at the end of the day, how do you judge a song if, if like, the, like the silence, you just did it, you two guys, and it worked. It was beautiful. And is that the ultimate sign of a good song? Like going back to, I lied to you. We're saying goodbye, and now I've got another question. <laughs> it's the, like... You, you can lie to us. Yeah, so, you know, on, the, on Reimagined, those songs have a fresh... They're the same, but they're markedly different. Did they? Because and some of them are longer as well. Mm -hmm. Did did I, did that inspire you to? Because there was so, there were so, there were parts that like, it's funny. Like I, there there are parts that are gospel. There are parts that are almost techno, and then there's that reverse thing that's just amazing. Yeah, I, I mean, I I think that what you said is true. Like, whereas a song at its core. Um, if, if it's good and it's a, and it excites you and it's special in some way, you can probably you can put any outfit on there. You know, you can dress it up however you want. And I, I remember I remember reading this interview. I think it was Eric Clapton. They were talking. He was talking about I shot the sheriff. Right. And I don't know if it was Clapton talking about it or Bob Marley talking about it. But one of those two dudes said uh, he's like, well, a song is never finished. Mm. He's like, there's just my version this i just put it out like this but it's never actually done somebody else can always take it and make it better or do whatever they want with it but it's just there's a song and that's a mm. version of it you know well you but know, i was like i always think about that a song is never finished you know that's just that is the true. moment in time for that song well and you think about for example like and i'm not just saying this because it's on the ep but with i will always love you we we had the utmost privilege to see Dolly Parton perform that. Oh wow! And and up until that point, you know, the only version that I that really you know is universally absolutely known is the Whitney Houston version. And when I saw Dolly Parton do it, there was such there was such sadness, and there it's it, almost this in, like unexplainable just emotion that 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 she brought to them obviously being the songwriter but her being so close to it um it was like a completely different song and and then therefore you know with Whitney Houston being the diva that she is it 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 exploded stratospheric in, yeah. but yeah. that also honestly you know was because the song inherently was good yeah. and no matter who does it it's going to be now i there have been people that have ruined songs. Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's always an option. <laughs> that's, that's always the option. But no, uh, but Dolly Parton at the Ryman was maybe one of the top five shows I've ever seen. She's oh, so wow. funny. Oh my gosh! She's so she was just cracking jokes the whole time, making fun of herself, making fun of other people, and then she just blast out like this song that is just deadly. And you're like, oh my god, that's such a good song. So good. <laughs> I highly recommend it. Go see Dolly. Yeah. Yeah, that's once again passion. Yeah. Like there's something true. that's the to me that's a great thing about music and that's why it's the I guess the only truly international language. Absolutely, and and it's a beautiful thing because I I feel like in times like these, I hope that whatever's on the other side of this, that the world can be more like the rock show because when you're on when at least from my vantage point when I'm on stage and I'm looking out at all these people and it's all different walks of life, it's all different sexual orientations, it's all different skin colors, it's all different, you know, they have different jobs, different, you know, hair lengths, different, you know, but every but when that song happens and everybody puts up their lighter, everybody puts up their lighter or everybody, you know, puts up their horns like this, we're all of a sudden you're just everyone's the same and we're none of that matters we're yeah. all in it together and so that's to me what that's what i love i know good unifying yeah more more music <laughs> let, <laughs> let music rule well you thankfully you guys speak the language really well <laughs> and you cross borders obviously i don't need to tell you about that because you know looking at what you guys do in europe and stuff so i can't wait for the new stuff can't wait to hear it Hopefully, more Me importantly, too. I will get to see you guys in your natural habitat, which is in Hailstorm on stage. Hopefully, RJ with some celebratory um, tape on his ears. Just, yes, yes. Just to remind us of that time <laughs> that I didn't even know about until the start of this interview. <laughs> so thank you so much again. And um, You're welcome. That was, um, I can't wait. I, 
I, I'm going to ask for the uh, acoustic segment right away because I want to play that again tonight because it oh, was really you're cool. So sweet. No, Thank it was you. really Thank good. And it makes me realize I've got work to do. So thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> <geez>. <laughs> uh, so have a great one, guys. Stay safe. Yeah, you too. And um, I'll speak thanks, to you very soon. But thanks again. Can't anytime, wait. man. Anytime. How great was that, folks? Two wonderful people giving great advice. And um, I only had to send them snacks. And we got an acoustic set out of it. So uh, there you go. Sweetwater here. I'm signing out. See you.